Hello everybody, you're welcome back again to the Reggae Appreciation Society. Anybody who's familiar with Bob Marley knows that the Tough Gong had a thing or two for the ladies. A global mega star and consummate playboy with 11 children from 7 women, including supermodels and the reigning Miss World by 1979. When it came to the opposite sex, he made his own rules and was the master of his own game. But little did he know that he was about to fall hard for Pretty Daddy's Girl from Africa. This young lady was Miss Pascaline Bongo Ondimba, the beloved first daughter of President Omar Bongo of the Republic of Gabon. According to Bob's close associates and friends, this lady had an effect on him like none they had ever seen before, and that is saying a whole lot. It was a controversial relationship that though very passionate, was doomed to fail. The relationship between both of them strengthened Bob's African roots and raised many eyebrows in the top echelons of the Gabonese government and eventually almost stirred the wrath of the president himself. The story began in November of 1979. Bob Marley was on tour in the USA promoting the survival album and was scheduled to perform in Los Angeles. Pascaline, who was a student in the US at the time, was a big admirer and fan of Bob and flew into town to catch the show. Her VIP ticket also got her a backstage pass and after the show, she and her younger sister went to meet with Bob to possibly get some pictures taken. When they walked up to Bob Marley, he was busy smoking a large wrap of herb and according to Pascaline, the first thing Bob said to her when they were introduced was, gosh, you're ugly. She was shocked at his rude remark but kept her composure and posed for the pictures with a smile. As she was leaving, someone who was there explained to Pascaline that Bob was offended by her straight, treated hair. As a Rastafarian, he believed everything was supposed to be natural and considered her perm to be an insult to his Africanness and Rastafarian beliefs. I guess the explanation was enough for Pascaline because before leaving the venue, she invited Bob and his crew to come over and finish up the evening with dinner at the luxurious mansion in Beverly Hills that she shared with her sister, Albertine. The pair spent the evening just chatting and getting to know one another. Pascaline, the spoiled child of a president, and Bob, a rugged artist from Trenchtown turned superstar. And despite their strikingly different backgrounds and personalities, they had amazing chemistry. The chemistry was obviously too strong to resist and a passionate love affair developed between the two before they would part and Bob would hit the road to continue with the remaining part of the survival album tour. But by early 1980, Pascaline pulled some strings to get Bob to visit Gabon and play his first show in Africa as part of a week-long celebration to mark President Omar Bongo's birthday. Bob and his crew were over the moon as Pan-Africanism was one of the central pillars of the Rastafarian faith. Even the cover art of the most recent album, Survivor, was a patchwork of all the continent's flags. Bob had visited Africa the year before on a four-day pilgrimage to Ethiopia, but this time it was to actually take his music and to perform on the motherland. Bob and the band arrived on the 4th of January 1980 at Libreville Airport to nothing less than a royal welcome. There was plenty of buzz in the air as the world famous Bob Marley and the Whalers were in town. But behind the scenes, Pascaline's father wasn't too pleased with the presence of Bob Marley, who he referred to in private as a ragged group of weed smoking Rastafarians. But he couldn't refuse his beloved Pascaline. He refused to officially receive Bob or even meet face to face with him. After getting advice from his aides, who warned him that Bob was a revolutionary who had been fingered as a subversive by the CIA. It was Pascaline's elder brother Ali, who by the way is the current president of Gabon, who welcomed him to the presidential palace. It was after arriving that the Whalers discovered that President Omar Bongo was basically a dictator. Bob toyed with the idea of cancelling the concert and leaving the country, but changed his mind for two reasons. The first being that they had travelled almost 10,000 kilometers to get there, and secondly, that Umar Bongo was the only African president who had offered Emperor Haile Selassie asylum in his country before he was deposed in the military coup of 1974. The concert held on the 5th of January at the Gymnasium Omnisport Bongo. Bob, as usual, delivered a great show that held the audience spellbound until the end of his performance. Thousands of fans swarmed his vehicle as he was leaving and it took the intervention of the police to clear a path for him after several hours and allow him leave the venue. Bob spent his remaining time in Gabon, divided between the warm embrace of Pascaline and doing what Bob loved to do best, 
which was mingling with everyday people very far from the presidential palace, photographers and protocol. He related with regular people in the markets, hung out with school kids at the beach and just soaked up the local scene. Even after Bob departed from Gabon, his relationship with Pascaline grew even stronger as he and the 24-year-old saw each other very often and spent plenty of time shuttling with the presidential jet between Libreville, Los Angeles and Kingston. According to Willis guitarist Junior Marvin, Bob was not very affectionate in public but was deeply in love with her and dreamt of having a child with his African princess. But unknown to Bob, Pascaline was secretly taking the pill and though she was in love with him, she was very well aware that they would never really be together because of her father's opposition to the affair and Bob's legendary womanizing. She stopped straightening and treating her hair and began to wear braids that looked a lot like dreadlocks. It was said that she had started growing her locks until her father found out and gave her a good and proper talking to. The pair remained inseparable and when Bob was diagnosed with cancer in December of 1980, she flew from LA to Germany to see him every weekend. It was in those final days that she regretted not having a child, but it was too late. Bob died on May 11, 1981 and she attended the funeral. Even after Bob had passed, she obviously still held him in her heart as she would name her first son Nesta Bongo Ping. She also remained very close to Bob's mother Sedela Boca up until her death in 2008. Pascaline would later serve as a minister with her father and brother's cabinet before leaving politics. After bringing the Whalers to Gabon, she also managed to bring Michael Jackson and Jay-Z to perform in Gabon over the years. And she is the founder of the International Abi Reggae Festival, which holds every year in Abidjan, Côte d'Ivoire. I guess the Tough Gong effect was just too strong. According to people close to Bob Marley, the Tough Gong had begun to make plans to establish a base in Africa before his sudden sickness and death. This was to enable him to be closer to Pascaline, who was on the verge of finishing her studies in the USA. But I guess we will never know how it all would have turned out. All we can do is speculate. So there you have it. Thank you for watching the video today. Please leave a like, subscribe, and until next time, jobless.